Fresh Driscoll Strawberries. One pound package, $6.99. Fresh Certified Angus Beef Top Round Steak, $6.99 per pound. Tostitos Tortilla Chips, 10 ounce bags, hot price at $4.99. Kellogg's Special K Cereal, 12 ounce box, only $6.99. Select a size roll, bounty paper towels, hot price, $2.49. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. You're watching Bermuda Broadcasting News. It's Wednesday, May the 2nd. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. Bermuda's recent passing of the ICO legislation makes it a world leader in terms of blockchain legislation and all the more attractive to investors. So says Dr. Patrick Byrne, CEO of online retailer Overstock.com and investment company Medici Ventures. All well and good, but is there more to all of this? Gary Moreno tried to find out. Dr. Burns Medici Ventures and the government of Bermuda have entered into a memorandum of understanding which will see his company establishing operations here and providing training and jobs for Bermudians eventually. Dr. Ben confident this development will prove beneficial to both sides, but more so for Bermuda. There's a new age coming to mankind riding on the blockchain. Bermuda, because of this regulation and this farsightedness, is putting itself in a position to be the Switzerland of that whole new age. It's the, the world this is going to be bigger than the internet. The world's going to be transformed over five to ten years by blockchain. Bermuda has taken a step that could make itself the Switzerland of that new, new era. So far, so good. But the term crypto technology still means one thing for many, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and the like, which have had a roller coaster ride on stock markets. Dr. Ben suggests this is way bigger than cryptocurrency. People do have that fear. <clears throat> I'd say it's like this. If you think back 20 years on the Internet, yes, there was this company selling dog food on the Internet, and that company, a whole bunch of companies, hundreds of them started up and are gone, and they were fads. But the internet isn't the fad, is it not a fad? And similarly, different coins, different companies trying to do things on blockchain are going to come and go. But the underlying technology of blockchain is world historic. And what Bermuda did today, I think, will be in history books. Because it's the first time a government has really taken this step. So the focus should be on blockchain as opposed to cryptocurrencies, right? Yes, sir. But what about the cyclical nature of the global economy and its possible impact on blockchain? The events of 2008 and the impact on the island's economy still fresh in the minds of Bermudians. What I believe this technology gives us is the chance to build a parallel, robust, alternative set of systems and institutions from stock markets to central banks to all kinds of things so that when this system collapses, when the system we that the world knows, which I have no confidence in, if and when it collapses again, there doesn't have to be a bailout. There's a, there's a hot standby ready to go, and it's these technologies that we've built. We're going to get them live in Bermuda, if God willing, that they were allowed to. We're going to get them all live and working here, and then just grow it from Bermuda. Bermuda's going to become the Switzerland of this, new, of this new era. It's really quite amazing what they've done here. Tax breaks and other initiatives offered by the U.S. government for businesses to repatriate there, Dr. Byrne says, are not sufficient as the necessary legislation is still being mulled over while Bermuda has now established such legislation. But the term initial coin offering could be about to change. As Dr. Byrne, in a recent interview with industry publication Crypto Global, stated they could now be known as STOs or security token offerings in an effort to provide greater clarity to regulators such as the SEC, which has shut down some ICOs and charged others with fraud. ICOs, by the way, have raised more than $11 billion in funding since 2016. Gary Moreno reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. We'll have more major news for you after this short break. Stay with us. We are Belco. We never stop. We never sleep. Together, we power Bermuda. We are not just employees. We are a family of 257 people who are experts in our field. We are mentors, ensuring the next generation of experts. We use fuel to generate electrical energy. We generate power by operating and running 17 generators. We work through the night to start your mornings and on holidays to power your celebrations. 
We monitor generators 24-7 to ensure an uninterrupted energy supply. We manage all of Bermuda's electricity and our operations center is always running. We transmit your energy from Belco to 34 substations across Bermuda and direct to your homes and businesses through overhead wires. We keep Belco moving. Our mechanical and electrical engineers work above, below, and all around to keep you switched on. We protect our team and work every day for a safer environment. We constantly work to conserve Bermuda. We support Bermuda, our Bermuda. Above all, we serve you. We are Belco. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service and everyday low prices. Welcome back. The 2016 census report was released by government today, revealing the average income of black Bermudians shrunk, while white workers saw a 1% increase, Tarai Trot reports. The population and housing report says blacks have the largest decrease at 13% as the income levels of both black males and females experienced double-digit percentage declines over the period. Black males experience the largest decrease in median income of 13% or just over $7,000, followed by black females of 12% or just under $7,000. The median annual personal gross income declined from more than $58,000 to $53,000, while the unemployment rate in the country was unchanged at 7%. The average household size declined from 2.39 to 2.26 persons per household. The population was recorded at 63,779 in 2016 with the unemployment rate unchanged at 7 percent. Meanwhile, the data reveals the average weekly hours worked in main employment declined from 41 to 40 hours. The number of occupied dwelling units was just over 28,000 in 2016. Up to five people per day are treated for asthma-related emergencies in Bermuda. The condition affects approximately 8,000 adults and children, but many are not managing the condition properly. This is according to Open Airways, a charity bringing awareness to the importance of using a preventer inhaler daily before an attack strikes. Yesterday, the charity celebrated World Asthma Day on the steps of City Hall. Asthma is a long-term common inflammatory disease of the airways of the lungs. Symptoms can include wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, and shortness of breath caused by a variety of triggers. In Bermuda, it affects one in five school-aged children and one in ten adults. That's more than in the U.S. by comparison. Some people are managing it very well, but not everyone, unfortunately. Um, many people just rely on the blue relief inhaler, Ventolin, and they're actually not really treating their asthma. It's important to note that the absence of these episodes for weeks or even years does not mean you've outgrown the condition. We have too many people visiting the hospital for their asthma. What we want is to actually prevent all those asthma attacks. Generally, it's taken somebody you know, three to five days, their asthma's been getting worse, before they get to that crisis point where they need to go to the hospital. We want people to recognize early on that their asthma is deteriorating, know what to do, how to increase their medications. The number of hospital visits are high. However, government spokesperson Crystal Caesar said the number of patients admitted to hospital for asthma have fallen by 76 percent in the past 21 years. Sadly, though, Lige Simmons passed away in hospital late last year due to asthma at the age of 27. The popular stylist was described as a caring and loving friend to many. Close friends and family held a fundraiser recently to celebrate her life with much success. The event raised over $3,000, which will be donated to Open Airways in Leger's memory to fund their educational projects in the community. 
It is thankfully a very rare occurrence in Bermuda, but we do we have to not be complacent. It can happen as it did, and so we do need to be aware that asthma can be life-threatening, and so we need to take it and give it its respect. Open Airways is available for a chat at any time. We're here the first Wednesday of every month from 4 till 6 in Warwick Pharmacy and we're here basically just to help their clients. So anybody who's, they will sometimes actually arrange appointments but otherwise people just dropping in can come and talk to us and we can give them advice. To donate to Open Airways in memory of Liget or to find out more, call 232-0264. Well, it's sunny skies expected all the way through to the weekend as summer is fast approaching. Let's find out the latest over at the AccuWeather headquarters. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and hopefully your day has been a great one. We are under the influence of a beautiful weather pattern. We have high pressure really just situated uh, right over us, at least to our west, and that's keeping things nice and calm. You'll remember back over the weekend, we had a cold front come through. You can still see that frontal boundary, and it's basically stalled out here. And over the next couple of days, we'll have to watch this zone uh, just to the north of Hispaniola. We could see a disturbance developing, but at this point, it looks like it'll bring some showers to our west, and we very well may wind up with a very long pattern of dry weather. So look at the radar here, uh, not a whole lot of action going on. Again, that frontal boundary stalled off to our east, so we've got nothing but dry air over us. If you have any plans of doing anything outdoors, uh, Nice quiet stretch of weather here. Really not a whole lot to say about what's going on right now other than it's beautiful outside. Temperatures are in the low 70s. Humidity between 55 and 60 percent. Winds are coming in out of the north between 8 to 12 knots. And the water temperature currently at 71 degrees. No issues out on the water. Actually a nice tranquil uh, pattern here for the next couple of days. So no marine alerts. Waves inside the reef one foot or less. Waves outside of the reef right around 2 to to four feet. So overnight tonight, it stays quiet, mainly clear skies. Temperatures tonight right around 68 degrees. So nothing to complain about tonight. And if you have any plans of heading out on the water for tomorrow, we have your tidal times right over here. Again, we don't have any marine alerts. We usually like to put that up in this bar for you. So uh, if you're planning to head out on a boat, do some fishing, Whatever, it should be a nice day for tomorrow to get outside and enjoy it. Temperatures are going to be in the low 70s for your daytime high. And once again tomorrow night, we're looking at temperatures in the upper 60s. It will be a mostly sunny and nice day all across the island. And believe it or not, the East Coast actually seeing some warmer temperatures than here in Bermuda. New York City for tomorrow is going to get into the 80s. Also, Boston, they're close to 90 degrees today. Tomorrow, still very hot, 86, 85 there in Atlanta. We'll see some showers around Miami. And we're also seeing a couple of showers and thunderstorms here uh, into some of our islands, Jamaica, Barbados, also uh, into Trinidad with those temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. So let's take a look at the extended forecast and see what we have going on as we get closer to the weekend. Again, for your Thursday, even into Friday, quiet mix of sun and clouds out there. Daytime high staying in the low to mid 70s, even nighttime lows, upper 60s and low 70s. At this point, the weekend is looking great to get outside and get things done. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s. And at this point, looks like we stay dry at least into early next week. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. This summer I was in Germany on holiday with my family and on a whim one day my son and I joined a speed sliding competition and as I came down the water slide I went straight down in the pool and whacked my left foot on the bottom of the pool and I looked down and I didn't see a foot. I just saw the bones sticking out and I started to feel faint. I was ambulanced to a hospital where I stayed for 11 days and had surgery. I had snapped all the ligaments on both sides of my ankle. And in the middle of all this stress and pain, we thought, how are we going to deal with health insurance? How will we pay for this? And I got a response from Allison at BFNM and she said, your admission and surgery will be covered at 100%. I didn't have to put it on a credit card and deal with the reimbursement later. 
it made such a big difference to us. And for me, the BFNM difference is stress-free insurance when I really needed it. Welcome to Furniture Walk. At Furniture Walk, we have one of the island's widest selections of top brand home furnishings, including Stearns & Foster, Craftmaster, Natutsi, Universal, Bassett, and many more. Whether you're freshening up your living room or remodeling your entire home, we have all the brands and top quality furnishings you'll need. We also offer in-house financing. Can't find what you're looking for in-store? No problem! We can special order it for you. Our website has an even larger selection of the world's best furniture. Stop by our Paget store and we'll be happy to help you get on your way to finding the perfect selection for your home or office. Furniture Walk, furnishing Bermuda's homes for over 30 years. Bermuda, Bermuda, Bermuda. You, you want, want it. it, you need it, you ask you for, it. for it. Backed by popular demand, One Communications presents, presents, presents Razor Returns. Hey, it was awesome, Razor! Oh, big fan. It was an awesome show. Amazing. What an incredible show. I never expected. It's amazing. It's amazing. May 11th, 12th, and 13th, featuring a special Mother's Day show. A special Mother's Day show that will mesmerize, that will mesmerize your mind. Your mind. It's mind blowing. I yes. can't figure out how any of that happened. I don't want to know. Returns May 11th, 12th, and 13th. Tickets sold at Audiovisual Hamilton and Somerset, Fairmont, Southampton, and online at ptix.bs. Sponsored in part by exclusive events, the Sarah's Family of Service Stations, Photogenic Photography, Fairmont Southampton Hotel, and exclusive flowers. Tickets are disappearing fast, so get yours today. Allegations of wrongdoing and other questionable activity in the promotions processes of the Bermuda Police Service. The situation is said to have resulted in diminishing morale throughout the service, with the threat of legal action looming. Here's Gary Moreno with more. Morale within the BPS is said to be at an all-time low among not only the ranks, but the support staff as well, which is made up of civilians. The chief cause, we're told, is the failure to name a successor to Commissioner Michael De Silva with just about a month left before he demits office. A well-placed member of the BPS contends the very process of selecting a new commissioner has been met with a significant level of angst as it's thought the process is geared toward choosing a non-Bermudian as the next head of the BPS. Among the reasons for this suggestion, we're told, is the desire for the new commish to possess a master's degree, something it said was not required in the past. Asked about this, Government House responded that in line with best practice, the position has been advertised both locally and overseas. As made clear in the job advertisement, a number of qualifications and qualities are being considered in the recruitment process, including work experience in the Bermuda Police Service or a working knowledge of law enforcement and public safety issues in Bermuda. There is no requirement for a master's degree. The job advertisement stated preference for candidates with a university degree, preferably at master's level, but it also stated that consideration would be given to candidates with related professional qualifications and relevant experience in lieu of academic qualifications. Another issue it's claimed leading to the low morale is that the answers to questions included in the constable to sergeant exam were leaked to certain officers writing that exam. A spokesperson for the BPS confirmed to us an anonymous email was received on May 1st this year alleging that a police officer had compromised the integrity of the promotion examinations which were held on the 27th of April. An invitation has been sent out to the author of the email to make a full report to the Professional Conduct Unit in order that an assessment can be made to determine if there was a breach of the standards of professional behavior as provided in the Police Orders 2016. Elsewhere, Sergeant Andrew Herewood, president of the Bermuda Police Association, confirmed that there are concerns among the membership about not only the sergeant-to-inspector exam, but also the constable-to-sergeant exam. According to Sergeant Herewood, those exams were different from in previous years. He, however, declined to explain in what manner. Our source, though, told us there is an increase of almost 40% in the number of questions on the exam. The BPS spokesperson explained the revised promotion policy has consolidated the previous knowledge exams and the procedure exams into a single exam for constable to sergeant and a single exam for sergeant to inspector. 
Each exam consists of 150 multiple choice questions. Another concern expressed to us is said to be court action filed by two officers who allege they are being discriminated against in the promotions process. These officers, an inspector bidding to become a chief inspector and a chief inspector seeking to be promoted to superintendent, were purportedly told they were ineligible for promotion since they did not meet the personal development record requirements. Although it is said that two current senior officers were promoted despite having the same personal development record as the inspector and chief inspector, but was subsequently grandfathered in. But back to the commissioner's situation. It is understood there are four contenders for the post, with three being local officers and one non-Bermudian. Questions are being raised about the position being advertised overseas since it's been suggested to us that the service has been run by locals for the past decade plus. And there are very capable senior officers within the BPS who can assume the commissioner's post. Government House told us an announcement on the next police commissioner will be made in due course. Further, there are sources contending there is a glaring divide within the BPS based on ethnicity, gender and nationality, with the pecking order described as British officers first, Bermudians second and West Indians at the bottom of the totem pole. The BPS spokesperson declined comment on that claim. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. More than 60 business leaders descended on New York City today to spread the word that Bermuda is not just open for business, it's the place to do business. A cross-section of industry experts attended the Bermuda Executive Forum, including those from cyber, shipping and fintech sectors. The one-day event was organized by the Bermuda Business Development Agency and was meant to entice new investment to the island. More than 300 people registered to attend. The forum tackled a number of hot issues, including blockchain, U.S. tax reforms and mergers and acquisitions. This is the second such international forum the BDA has hosted, the last one held in London last Last November, AIG CEO Brian Dupro was the keynote speaker and extolled Bermuda's talent base, especially in the insurance industry. Today, if you're at the height of your game, you're in Bermuda. If you want to get to the height of your game, you're going to Bermuda. Bermuda has the most amazing talent base in my business that you can, you, that you can ever assemble. Sports news after this short break. You can count on us. Red seedless grapes, only $3.99 per pound. Fresh Purdue chicken drumsticks, half price, $1.79 per pound. Select varieties of Yoplait yogurt, 6-ounce tubs, only $1.09. Scott Extra Soft Toilet Tissue, 4 rolls, only $3.29. Thai 2X Laundry Detergent, 92-ounce bottle, hot price, $19.99. Save $7.06. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. And Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. Are you looking to expand your customer base, increase sales, and be a part of the Island Community Events for 2018? Bermuda Broadcasting Company can make that happen. Be a part of World Cup 2018, Bermuda Day Half Marathon, Bermuda Heroes Weekend, Cup Match Classic, and Eastern Counties Cricket. Inquire about our new advertising opportunities, whether big or or small. We will deliver. Come and see us at Fort Hill, Devonshire or email us at sales at bbc.pm or send us a message on Facebook at Bermuda Broadcasting. Bermuda's all-important third match of the ICC Division 4 tournament going on in Malaysia saw them come out on top by 58 runs over Jersey. Bermuda would score 242 all out with Kamau Levrock returning to the lineup with a bang hitting the first ball of the match for six. Levrock would go on to be the top scorer for Bermuda with 66. He hit eight fours and three sixes. Captain Taryn Frey added 56 hitting three fours. Nathaniel Watkins was the pick of the Jersey bowlers returning figures of 10 overs, one maiden, three for 36. In reply, Jersey were bowled out for 184, with Bermuda winning by 58 runs. Benjamin Stevens was the top scorer with 40, while Dion Stubble was the pick of the Bermuda bowlers, returning figures of 8.5 overs, no maidens, 4 for 33. Gennaro Tucker bowled 8 overs, 2 for 31, and Charles Trott bowled 7 overs, 2 for 32. Bermuda's Paralympian and Parapan gold medalist and record holder Jessica Lewis has defended her and her fellow athletes in response to the United States of America's president Donald Trump's recent comments. Lewis posted on social media, quote, when reading a comment that was made recently about the Paralympic Games being tough to watch by the president of the United States, I thought about what I would say in response. She goes on to write, to me, the Paralympic Games and move have given me the opportunity to be proud of who I am. It has taught me the 
importance of working hard, dreaming big, and being able to push through any type of obstacle that may come up in our lives. The games are about celebrating people's unique abilities and differences with a population of people who are not always seen for what they are capable of doing, Lewis concluded by writing. So, what is tough to watch for me? It's people's inability to treat others with the same kindness, respect, and level of acceptance that they would a good friend. To the differently able community, stay strong, keep fighting, and always believe you are capable and worthy of greatness. We will break down these stigmas. End quote. The My Bermuda House National Squash Championships continued at the Bermuda Squash Rackets Association Club last evening. In the ladies' open division, number one seed Rachel Barnes advanced with a straight games win over Ty Williams, 11-6, 11-2, 11-3. For the number two seed, Laura Robinson defeated Jane Chapman, 11-5, 11-1, 11-3. Three matches in the men's classic division needed five games to decide a winner. Ryan Spencer Arscott defeated Peter Dury, 5-11, 11-7, 8-11, 11-6, 11-8. Leith Raw defeated Adam Hawley, 11-13, 12-10, 9-11, 11-7, 11-7, and Alex Elfberg defeated Alex Southern, 12-10, 8-11, 8-11, 11-5, 11-9. In the junior division, Nikki Southern defeated Tyler Kompash, 11-9, 5-11, 11-3, 11-8. After eight completed races in the Bermuda International Invitational Sailing Race Week, overall series for the International One Design, Chester's Peter Wickwire has moved to the top of the leaderboard with 21 points. Bermuda's Martin Cease is seven points back, with Fisher Island, Rugg and Burnham close behind with 29 points. Wickwire had a great day on the waters of the Great Sound, with his worst finish of the day being fifth. Elijah Daly went back in the pool and this time competing in the Mac April Invitational Swimming Championships in Canada. Daly will compete in nine finals, winning eight gold medals and one silver medal. Daly competed in the men's 50 meter freestyle, finishing second in a time of 29.07. Daly then would go on a gold medal run, winning the 100 meter freestyle final, stopping the clock in a time of 102.38. A time of 2.18.09, so Daly win the 200 meter freestyle final. He would then clock a gold medal time of 4.49.53 during the 400 meter freestyle. Daly would win the 100 meter breaststroke gold medal touching the wall in the time of 122.97. Daly stopped the clock in the time of 30.31 on his way to winning the 50 meter butterfly. He would then win the 100 meter butterfly gold medal in the time of 108.15. Daly would win the 200 meter butterfly final touching the wall in the time of 2.28.04, breaking his own record time of 2.40.40 set on May 14th, 2017 during the NYAC performance meet in Canada. Daly would close out with a 200 individual medley gold medal performance with a time of 2.30.40 2.30.40 with his time breaking the previous record time of 2.33.74 set by Sam Williamson back on January 14, 2017 during the Bassa Long Course Qualifying Meet. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. More environmentally conscious commuters are turning to hybrid and electric cars in an effort to reduce their carbon footprint. But as transport becomes more technologically advanced, so must auto mechanics. If they don't, the consequences could be lethal, as Gary Foster Skelton reports. 360 volt DC. Make a mistake, that's it. It's curtains, it's game over. Protecting the environment is not for the faint of heart. This is a dangerous system and people can definitely get hurt. The growing number of hybrid and fully electric cars on the roads promise cleaner air and less noise pollution. It's like driving a ghost. But the 360 volt technology powering this change requires specialist training. An unqualified tinkerer could easily put their life in jeopardy. When your cell modules start from here, come all the way forward. It's same as like Belco. You take all the necessary safety precautions, you wear all the necessary equipment. Only safe five people are allowed to work on these vehicles. That's why Bermuda Motors has brought in Nazareno Machetti from Kia Motors. He's putting service engineers and government representatives through a week of intense training. When we originally started working as mechanics, which is the old traditional dirty hands getting stuck in and smoke and everything else from cars, whereas now the technology is so much cleaner. As soon as I opened the book, I was a rabbit in headlights, to be honest. That's why I'm here for this course, actually, to uh, better my knowledge, to be able to help the rest of the colleagues at the government quarry, to ensure that uh, when the vehicles are bought by government and the ministers, we as the technicians can f- fix them and support. Over the course of the week, students will have to demonstrate their new skills by repairing faults in the hybrid Kia Nero and the fully electric Kia Soul. 
Bermuda Motors also sells BMW's hybrid and electric cars. General Manager Krishna King says the America's Cup brought the local launch of these vehicles forward. With BMW as a title sponsor for the America's Cup, they had a lot of electric cars come over here. We were, I think, uh, ahead of the schedule by almost two years to the rest of the world. Dealerships in the Caribbean are just starting to bring in electric vehicles, so staff from Southern Sales in Trinidad are also here to take part in the training. Bermuda went into electric and hybrid before us, so we tend to follow the footstep into that. With more and more electric vehicles hitting Bermuda's roads, advanced training in their operation and repair will be essential to keep mechanics both employable and safe from lethal electric shocks. Are we not going to see as many home mechanics on these kind of vehicles? Absolutely not, because if they make a mistake, that's it. You can create more problems and it can kill you. It's as simple as that. Gary Foster Skelton for Bermuda Broadcasting News. And that's all we have for you tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.